All this time, I've been sanding in tight spaces with my own two hands like a sucker. Never again. Anyone who's been following my channel for more than like five seconds knows how much I hate sanding. I mean, I hate sanding. Hate, 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 hate with a capital H, hate it. Nothing puts me in a worse mood than spending more than like five seconds hand sanding something. Get tired and out of breath. My muscles get sore and fatigued. It just takes forever and I'm breathing sanding dust and it's just miserable. And so over the last five or 10 years, I've been on this quest to find the best sanding accessories so that I can just spend less time hating my life and more time enjoying what it is I'm building. So in this video, I'm not only gonna show you what I feel like are the best value sanding accessories, but I'm also gonna give you tips and tricks on how to use them to get the most value out of them. For this video, I'm gonna go in order of what I feel like is the best value. Now that's not necessarily the cheapest items first, but just the uh, cost to benefit ratio. Okay, so it's really gonna be your most useful tools up front. And so we're gonna start right off the bat with a good quality power sander. And by power sander, I mean orbital sander. Not a palm sander, not a mouse sander, not a sanding pad attachment for your oscillating multi-tool. I mean just good quality orbital sander. Okay, why an orbital sander? Well, a random orbit sander like this not only spins, but also vibrates as it spins. And as a result, it's far less likely to leave tool marks on your project. And so with the palm sanders and mouse sanders and the sanding attachments for your oscillating multi-tool, they kind of just have one rotation that they do and they're far more likely to leave tool marks on your projects that you then have to go back and hand send out later, which in my opinion, pretty much defeats the purpose. So hands down, a good quality orbital sander is the number one best value. I use these things pretty much nonstop all day, every day. I actually own two of the exact same sander. That's because I bought one on Amazon, which I'm gonna put Amazon links to all this stuff down in the description. But then, I don't know, last year sometime, one of these popped up for a good deal on Facebook Marketplace and just knowing how often I use my orbital and not ever wanting to be without it, I just went ahead and grabbed it so that I could have a backup. And that has actually turned out to be a really beneficial thing. Now, you don't necessarily need to get the DeWalt Orbital Sander, although I do think that it is the best value because this thing is seriously robust. I have been using it for years and years and years. I use it on a daily basis and I use it hard because you guys know I hate sanding. So anytime I can sand with this instead of my hands, I am. And so I highly recommend the DeWalt. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link for a cheaper one that has also gotten good reviews, but I can't recommend the DeWalt more. And so like I mentioned, having two of them has actually been really beneficial because the next sanding accessory I'm gonna tell you about uh, goes along right with the orbital sander and that's these foam sanding pad attachments. So because of my extreme distaste for sanding, uh, I'm trying out another accessory it's right here. It's a little like Velcro on kind of spongy pad. I love the orbital, but one of the shortcomings is that it works best on flat surfaces, curved surfaces, not so much. So this sponge, I think is going to really help it contour. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. That's incredible. That this one time was worth this purchase. I don't know why they don't come with these from the factory. This is so much better. Oh, I'm so happy about these. All of these transitions, this right here, this right here, down at the heel, so smooth. Oh, I love this, this is wonderful. And so it's really helpful if you're trying to sand something with contoured edges to have a foam attachment like is on this one right here, okay? It just makes this a lot more pliable and you can do those contoured edges and it flex and molds with it and it just works absolutely wonderful. Now, the reason why I say it's been great having two orbital sanders is because unfortunately these foam sanding discs have a pretty finite lifespan. Uh, the hook and loop on them wears out after like your fourth or fifth time using it. I mean, watch this. So I have a spare sanding pad right here. Look at how good that sticks. Wonderful, right? So yeah, after four or five uses, these things become pretty much useless. And so what I did, you notice that I have an extra sanding pad for my orbital sander. And so what I did is I just took 
one of these foam pads and I just glued it directly to that sanding pad. And so if I wanna use this for flat surfaces, uh, I can just unbolt this whole sanding disc, put this sanding pad on and I can use it for flat surfaces. But since I have two, I really just leave this one set up for cushion sanding. And so that has been extremely beneficial. And so not only am I able to use my orbital on more surfaces, but I can spend less time doing the tool changes between the flat pad and the foam pad as a result. Now, the reason why I glued the foam directly to the pad as opposed to trying to glue on some stronger hook and loop is because honestly, I tried that. And what it is, it's just the extra weight from the pad. When this thing starts spinning, it just destroys hook and loop for some reason. And so it doesn't matter. Like I've used industrial grade hook and loop Velcro and it eventually just falls right off after four or five uses. And so that's why I just decided to start gluing the thing straight on there. And so this one I've had on here for about six months. And as you can see, it's seen better days. It's about time to replace it. And so uh, probably within the next week or so, I'm just gonna pry that off, scrape it, and then glue on this other foam pad. Another tool that you are not going to need is a belt sander. Now, belt sanders are great for removing a lot of material quickly, but again, they leave lots of tool marks. And so that brings me to my next point about the orbital. In order to get some more value out of it, just use high quality and the right grit sandpaper, okay? I found that if I just use like 40 or 60 grit sandpaper on one of these things, that it's actually more productive than the belt sander and leaves a lot less tool marks to clean up. So starting with a heavy grit like 60 and then working your way to 120 and then 220 and then 320 if you wanna finish it off really nice, it will leave no trace of tool marks and you won't spend any time hand sanding. Also something that you're probably gonna hear me say a lot during this video is that the type of sandpaper that you use matters. And this is something that I did not learn early enough. I used the cheapest sandpaper that I could find. I used it for way too long. It clogged up, it wore out, it was unproductive, and it caused extra hours of sanding as a result. And so now I don't cheap out on sandpaper. So I'm gonna show you what I feel like are the best value sandpapers. These are not the cheapest, but the ones that I feel like last the longest for the least amount of money. If I need to buy something in town today because I ran out of a specific grit that I need to finish a project, I will run to Walmart and I will get the Gator brand sandpaper. They have the uh, eight holes on it, which is great because again, that helps prevent it from clogging up faster and leaving extra marks when you're sanding. More importantly, it is a decent quality sandpaper. And when you buy the larger packs like this 24 pack, uh, it's really inexpensive. Now, if I'm not pressured to get a project done today and I can order it online, I will order from Amazon. And again, link in the description, Duragold. Duragold for about the same price as the Gator will get you an aluminum oxide sandpaper. Okay, it's this like yellow tint sandpaper. And aluminum oxide is just far superior for a lot of reasons that I'm not really gonna get into, but just know that it clogs less and it lasts longer. And so that's the most important thing. Now, before I move on to the rest of the accessories in this video, cause I know they're gonna be cool and you guys are gonna get excited about them. I just want to stress one more time don't bother with these other things until you've invested in a good handheld random orbit sander. You will get by for a really long time with just this one tool, provided you're using the right sandpaper and you're using the foam sanding pad when necessary. You can use this on a variety of surfaces and you can get into tiny little areas. I honestly think that I probably would have given up guitar building by now because of the amount of sanding involved if it weren't for this one tool right here. So now we're gonna move on to probably what I think is the coolest tool that I've got in a really long time. I really wish I had known that this thing existed long before now, and that's this half inch belt sander. Now I gotta give a shout out to Chris over at King Bespoke Creations. He's the one who turned me on to what he calls a finger sander. It's just a half inch belt sander. I have wasted so much time sanding into tiny little tight crevices using my fingers instead of using an awesome machine like this. This particular one is made by a brand called Wen. I got it on Amazon for I think 35 or $40. Again, link down in the description. So I've had this thing for about four or five months now. I use it on a nearly daily basis and I use it hard. And so far it's showing zero signs that it's gonna quit on me. But even if it did, even if this thing was only a six month investment, I would just buy another one. I mean, it's that inexpensive and it's that 
handy. Of course, the next one that I buy, I would probably buy with Amazon's four year replacement guarantee because the amount of action that this thing sees, it would definitely be worth that. So what's so great about this thing? Well, obviously you can see how tiny it is and how you can fit that into lots of tiny cracks and crevices that would normally require some sandpaper wrapped around your finger to get into, this thing can get to, which is amazing. Now, I had actually even thought about buying two of these so that I could have them set up with a coarse grit and a fine grit sandpaper and be able to go back and forth without having to do any tool changes. The reason why I haven't is because changing out the sanding belts on this thing is so simple. I mean, I'm gonna show you right now. So on here, I have the 60 grit sanding belt that came with it. Here is the 120 grit. If I wanted to switch, you just push this in like that and it slides right off. So then you grab your new sandy belt. There's a little arrow that tells you the direction it's supposed to spin. You just hook it here around this pulley in the back and then around the pulley in the front and then to tension it, there's a little button here on the back. Click it, bam, auto tensioning and auto tracking. This thing will not fall off. No matter how hard I've pushed on it, the belt stays centered over the pulleys. Pretty incredible, honestly. A big selling point on this sander for me was that I can buy replacement belts for it at my local Harbor Freight if I need to. Now, I typically stay away from Harbor Freight sandpaper because it's not very productive. It clogs very easily. Even though it's cheap, I just don't think it's a good value. So when these break, I probably will buy more Wen brand if I have time. But if I don't have time and I have to buy it in town today, I know that I can at my local Harbor Freight. Now, some other things about this finger sander is that it has an adjustable angle, which is very surprisingly handy. Being able to get your hand in close to something, uh, especially working with tight spaces, that feature comes in more handy than I realized it would. It's also variable speed, okay? You can adjust the speed and I pretty much only run it on like one or two, but it goes up till six. And so if you want this thing to be really productive, if you really wanna hog out a lot of material, you put on a thick sanding belt and you run it on its highest setting and it is extremely productive. Some tips for using this thing. You'll notice that if you look closely inside here, we have a spot where it's backed by these metal plates on both sides. And then beyond that, there's a spot where the belt has the ability to flex kind of on both sides up here near the wheel and back here. And so that's really great. If you want to hog out a lot of material, make sure you're pressing on a spot that is backed by that little metal plate and you can really press down on that and remove a lot of material. Or if you're less concerned about hogging out a lot of material and more concerned about having a smoother overall finish, then you can use the fleshy part is what I call it or the part that's beyond the reinforcement and that will give you a really nice smooth finish. And so that's a really handy tip for getting the most out of this. And the last power tool that we're gonna talk about is by far the most expensive tool and that is the oscillating spindle sander. Now this comes in at like $200, making it way more expensive than anything else on this list. But in my opinion, it really is worth every penny. There are just some sanding jobs that it's way better to be able to have both your hands free to hold your material while something else does the sanding. So now you might be thinking, well, why don't you just get a stationary belt sander or a disc sander or a combination belt disc sander? Well, for the same reason why I say get an orbital over a standard palm sander is because belt sanders and disc sanders, they just spin in one direction and they leave tool marks on your project that you have to go back and sand out later. And so if you have to sand after you're done sanding, again, I feel like that really defeats the purpose. Now the oscillating spindle sander, on the other hand, very much like the orbital sander, in addition to spinning around and around, also bobs up and down, which equates to less tool marks left by the tool that you will have to sand out later. And so my advice is to just spend a little bit more money and get the right tool for the job so that you only have to do the job one time. And I don't necessarily think that you need to get the Home Depot rigid version, um, unless you can find a good deal on a used one on Facebook Marketplace, which is what I did. I think I got that for like $150. So yeah, shop Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, see if you can find yourself a used one. But the new rigids that they're selling in Home Depot right now are actually made in the same factory as the Wen and the Harbor Freight version. And so there's definitely no need to spend more money just because it has the rigid brand name on it or the fact that it's painted orange or comes from a store where everything's painted orange. Uh, just buy the cheaper version at Harbor Freight or the Amazon link for the Wen version there in the description. Now these powered 
sanders go a long way. They get you like 99% of the way there, but every good craftsman knows that at some point, you're gonna have to sand with your hands. It's very important when you're hand sanding OSB that you sand it with the grain. And in this case, the grain is that direction. And so my tip for you when you are sanding with your hands is one, again, the sandpaper that you use matters. Don't cheap out on sandpaper. My favorite brand is 3M Sand Blaster Pro. It comes in a couple of different packs. Get it in every grit from 60, 120, 220, and 320 because using the proper grit goes a long way into making sure that you are being as productive as possible. But also using a quality sandpaper like Sand Blaster Pro, it just doesn't clog as easily and it doesn't wear out as fast. And basically that just adds up to you using less of your own muscle to sand. You guys might remember from previous videos, my angry sanding montages. Just because I hate sanding by hand so much, you might've noticed that you don't see those as often on my channel anymore. And the reason why is because using these tools, by the time I get to hand sanding, it's a way more enjoyable experience. Now, I still don't care for it, but it's not nearly as miserable because I'm not spending nearly as much time doing it. And when I am doing it, it's usually at the very end of a project where I can smell the completion and I'm far more motivated to do it. And so hopefully this is all helpful to you guys. I really want to see you guys spend more time building and less time sanding. And if you guys have any tips or accessories that I missed in this video, please let us know down in the comments. That would be beneficial, not only for me, but to everyone else in the community. Make sure you guys are subscribed because you're going to be seeing me use these tools a lot more on my channel. And until next time, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I will see you in that next video.